بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين إلى يوم الدين أما بعد You are a customer and your privacy is a product who's benefiting from who person goes online and presumes he is getting free benefits no it is just an opportunity to use you as a commodity some people say i'm entitled to my privacy no you're not entitled to it it's more important than that it is a prerequisite so this is an important aspect in usul sometimes people have double standards where they demand privacy but they glorify those people who break into computers they glorify hackers so we need to distinguish what is beneficial and what is harmful people say we need technology but they're not ready to face the consequences that it comes with. Parent is too busy, so they give the child a cell phone to keep them busy. So, a simple thing like occupation. You couldn't think, you couldn't use the intellect which Allah has given you. There's no other way on earth you could keep your child productively busy productively in ibadah, productively protected from disobedience, ma'asiyah and destruction. So where's our mind gone to? So it seems harmless, but it's destructive. So we're no more constructive anymore. We take it for granted. Somebody boasts, hey, my, my child is so intelligent, They're two years old and they know how to switch on the phone, they know how to surf the web. You put in your two old two year old child in an ocean with sharks and reptiles that even an expert swimmer will not survive and you're saying see they're in the sea so how foolish how much folly so it's 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 an assumption that we've got these things covered but they engineered they've been designed to lure to trap a person so we on one end, they on the other end. Shaitan is there. Batil is there. Falsehood is there. We've got the nerves. It's like a lawyer's dog that was running unleashed stole a piece of meat from a butcher shop. So the butcher became very furious. He marched straight to the lawyer's office and he asked the lawyer, Tell me if a dog running unleashed steals a piece of meat from my store. Do I have the right to demand payment for the meat from the dog's owner? So the lawyer said, definitely. The butcher said, then you owe me eight dollars. Then you owe me eight dollars. Your dog was loose, stole some meat. So the lawyer immediately took out the eight dollars and paid the butcher but two days later he got a bill from the lawyer for a hundred dollars for legal consultation for legal consultation so where we think so we win in but where we actually in the end when when we realize it and it's too late it's game over so as a believer we we do things gradually we do it calculated it's not spontaneous we verify so the propaganda machines of the world are working propaganda one is the real news which is fake news and propaganda they convince a person so much about dunya the love of the dunya so much to forget akhirah that we buy it Al-anat min Allah, wal-ajalatu min ash-shaytan. 
So to be calculated, to do things gradually is from Allah. Clemency, deliberateness is from Allah. But haste is from shaitan, is from Iblis. So to haste in, in assuming, in, to haste into reacting. We are we on a, a rapid mode, we are on acceleration. We need deceleration. With regards to the ayat, and the ayah, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, in ja'akum fasiqum binaba'in fatabayyanu. O oh, people of Iman, if a evildoer comes to you, or they report, somebody brings news to you, then introspect, verify, look into it carefully. Why? Because you may harm someone due to your ignorance. And then you will be very, very sorry. فَتُسْبِحُوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلْتُمْ نَادِمِينَ we have a lot of regrets. So Walid ibn Uqba was sent to collect the zakat from the Banu Mustalik. But they had some amnity, some dispute, some rivalry between them before Islam. So when they heard him coming, they were honored and they went out to receive him. This guest revering Allah in his Rasul. But he's seen people come into his direction. So Shaitan whispered in him, they come in here to kill you, get, move, move. So uh, he returned to Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam and he gave a report. He said, Ya Rasulullah, inna bani mustalik qad mana'u sadaqa. That they have refused to pay the sadaqa. And they wanted to kill me. So Nabi Al Islam became very upset and he was planning some retribution. They realized that the emissary had returned. So they went to Nabi Alayhi Salam to seek forgiveness. And they said, We heard that your emissary had come, we had went out to receive him, to honor him. But uh, for some reason, he went back and we didn't want the wrong message to come to you. وَإِنَّا نَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ غَضَبِ اللَّهِ وَغَضَبِ رَسُولِهِ So we seek a refuge from the anger of Allah and His Rasul. So we came to tell you what, what had actually occurred. And these ayat were revealed. فَتَبَيَّنُوا So how comes we are listening, we are hearing bayanat, we are hearing Quran, we are hearing ahadith, we are hearing the ulama, but what are we doing about it? Sometimes the speech is so better, we target the speaker. We target the speaker. Oh, ulama are like this, oh, these people are like this here. Yeah. If the shufats wear it, so as uh, a you say people complain and they, they they target people who pursue Islamic education, the ulama, the scholars, etc. And these are the so-called modernists, the advanced thinkers, so-called. So he said, uh, advising the ulama and the students, you should despise them as well. This is a sunnah of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. So when he was... Uh, Bell in the shop and people used to pass by Sakhiru Minhu. Used to mock at him. Qala in Tasharu Minna fa inna Nasharu Minkum Kama Tasharun. If you mock at us one day, we shall also mock at you. As you are laughing at us, surely we will definitely laugh at you. And then Montani is explained. My nephew was once traveling on a train when he was in his childhood days and in the compartment there was a top ranking police officer. So he asked him, he said, why is it that every student of Arabic, yani Islamic education, has a clean shaved head? So the student replied, 
Why is it that every student of Western education has a clean shaven face? So the answer was so what he, the officer, kept quiet. So we also need to take action. We need to listen in and not practice in his entertainment. So they want to harm you, they want to destroy you, they want to destroy your deen. Shaitan wants to take you to Jahannam. We know that. So they will throw all this dirt, all this fitna, all this propaganda, all the social media. What should we do? We should do something about it. Make sure every day is a day of progress. All the hidayat have been given, the mudakras have been made now also, this entire series. Either we just listen in for entertainment. Like a farmer's donkey fell once into a well, so the donkey was screaming, farmer came, see, he asked the people, please help me. They grabbed shovels and they were throwing dirt into the well. Whatever was around there, the dirt, they threw it. So it was screaming, the donkey was screaming, but then suddenly it kept quiet. And then the farmer went to see what happened. So you notice with every shovel of dirt that hit the back of the donkey, it would shake the dirt off and slowly take a step up. And it was doing that. So slowly, slowly it was gaining uh, some advancement towards the top and eventually the donkey stepped over the edge. So they can, they can throw dirt, but at the dirt, how much are we realizing and taking lesson? So even a person registers with a internet service provider, the moment a person signs up, your invisibility fades. So any authorities, any person that hacks into that information, or authorities get, get a, a notice to provide information, then they've got your name, they've got your address, they got the records of your internet sessions, including the times, the duration, the sites, your telephone number, your network address, your bank, how did you make payments? So your bank details, your credit card, and a lot of hosts, a host of a lot of information. So uh, that's already a compromise. So we're saying it's very important that a person prepares, he has systems, like we said, PGP, pretty good privacy. So uh, some people encrypt their emails, but what about the information? Besides the content of the email, so PGB encryption will make your content unreadable. But what about the metadata? So in an email, there is metadata to, from the IP address uh, connected to the service, the email origin, the recipients, the subject line. So this metadata is, uh, is is visible and your your modern email systems do not hide this information. The metadata is clearly visible, timestamps are clearly, clearly visible. So this is in plain text and third parties can access this information even though your email may be encrypted. For example, you send an email and two days later you send somebody else that's stored. They know who you're communicating with, they know why you're communicating with them, because the subject heading, and there's a lot of information that can be revealed. Somebody who was uh, doing some research and the FBI uh, wanted some information with regards to this person, so he decided that um, he used the metadata so track in the tracker, they track in you, but you can be in VAS and track them. So he hacked into the cellular provider, this was in LA, and he got the CDRs, call detail records. So from the FBI office that was in, in engaged with this file, the officer, he tracked the 
records from the records the agent would call the informant to get information so now he tracked the informant to show the time the number the length of the call how often it was called then you could obviously get the landline from the landline you could get uh, the person's address you could get their billing records and uh, you could connect it from that number to all authorities that are contacted them and uh, it was connected now to the main office then the attorney's office then the other government government offices then when this person was moved to a safe house their details obviously was on that same number which the agents were contacting now it was a new landline number so they he could actually track the details of a safe house so if you think so you're going to be safe in your safe house then uh, reverse engineering what he did so then you can use social engineering where you manipulate you have little bit information you call into a number and you get more details as well but it all starts with the metadata so um, each server when a person uses the internet then you have an ip address which is connected to the server so uh, this unique ip address gives you each country has details then the block which they in and each block comes to the final location of the person where he resides or where he is communicating so you communicating from a country for example london and for some reason your ip address is connected to somebody in north korea so that's going to flag even though you sent a happy birthday message it's going to flag why is your connection there So, so, so the computer software are crawling the servers and and they looking for for this information. So um, even from from this data, they could profile people. Somebody at eleven o'clock at night calling domestic violence hotline tells you much about those people. Somebody at midnight uh, calling a a suicide prevention hotline will tell you how disturbed they are but this is on that aspect on other side they can gain a lot of information so uh, in MIT they had a program called immersion which will map just the senders and receivers details they could map and profile a person so uh, Snowden has clearly said that your email, your text, your phone metadata is collected by NSA. So can can they can they collect uh, metadata from everybody? Technically no, yes, maybe when the the secret court order was given, but even more than that there's a there's a collection drive since 2001. So even though there is a authorized uh, US intelligence surveillance act and a person needs a a court order for foreign individuals within the US so people will say that you know what there is some law there is no law why these law enforcement agencies look at just statistics 2012 1856 requests and all were approved it's like a rubber stamp so uh, they could compel any corporation any private entity to release uh, your information so you are exposed so what we need to do now so you have to mask remove your true ip address that's where your connection of your internet your fingerprint like a online it's a it's a real life online fingerprint then software and hardware how to mask that so when you connect to a web- website then the hardware the s- software is is trickled into the system for example adobe the browser software gives the website the operating system the version and uh, what other software you have running on your desktop a lot of details are really compromised then to be anonymous so uh, 
when a person goes online then you need to be anonymous so anonymity from all aspects so uh, what risks are you and what exposure you can be also some people use proxy addresses which is not the real IP address but someone else's so you, you mask the origination you mask the location you uh, divert that some people host their own proxies so uh, uh, it's called anonymous remailer which will mask your email's IP address for you so uh, this changes the email address the sender the, the details of the recipient and uh, that can be used so you get a type 3 or mix minion which is a remailer which gives you this uh, full service where a person's emails the sender and the receiver will also be anonymous so uh, it provides anonymity it it will prevent people from eavesdropping people accessing all your details and uh, these servers receive the match message, decrypts them, reorders them, retransmits them, and eventually a person becomes anonymous. So that is important. The amal for today is to read salat immediately when the time comes in. So, for example, when the adhan goes, we should try to be there in the masjid before adhan goes, like the musturat in the place of salah. Plan your day around salah. Don't plan salat around your day follow awwal al waqt ala akhirihi ka fadl al akhirati ala al dunya the superiority of salah at the beginning of its prescribed time over its end is the superiority of the year after over this dunya al waqt al awwal min as salati ridwan allah the beginning of the prescribed time of Salah earns the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.